Hi, welcome to Inside Church. We're so glad that you are able to join us. We trust that as you watch the message that your heart will be stirred and that faith will be built. Amen. Um, but this evening I really wanted to share on purity and priority. So if you have your paper Bibles, you can quickly turn to Romans 6. So I think often when you hear the word purity, you probably just think of virginity. I don't know. Okay, you guys need to holler back at me or something. I just got all these R's. Um, but when you were born again, when you, if you have given your life to Jesus Christ, who's made that decision that Jesus, you're serving Jesus, you've given the Lord your life, amen. At that moment, you were made pure. You were made clean. Amen? Amen. And this is the reality. Okay, Romans 6 verse 4. We were buried therefore with Him by baptism in death. Who knew that when you were baptized, it was actually putting to death your old self. Amen. In order that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in a newness of life. Amen. Thank you, John T. So my question to you is, have you accepted the purity, this newness of life, and are we active in our pursuit for purity? What I mean is, who? what is purity? It's Christ-likeness, amen? Are we active in our pursuit to become like Christ? And what can be so dangerous is that we can, ex- we can expect that the things of like religious activity is us walking in purity, which it's not. Purity is a condition. How do you how do you acknowledge purity? Is like no one knows your thoughts and no one knows what's in your heart. Only you know that. To a degree, your spouse won't even know that. And that's what's purity. If if I can go into Siobhan's heart, what's in the crevice of her heart? If I can go in her mind, what's in the crevice of her mind? Because she can stand and worship and she can worship the Lord and she can read her word. But in the depths of who she is, is she pursuing the purity that which Christ paid for? Amen? And purity, it's this Christ-likeness. It's sanctification. So absolutely, you were saved at salvation, you're saved, the Lord's made you pure, but to continue in becoming more like Christ and our pursuit for purity and holiness, that's called sanctification. How do we be sanctified and grow in our sanctification? No takers. Okay, praise the Lord. John 17, 17. This is Jesus praying for us and we shared on this last week. But sanctify them in the truth. Your word is truth. Do you know the incredible reality of spending time with God and allowing the word of God to disciple you is that this word will always, it should always, it does it for me, I'm pretty sure it does it for you. It convicts you and it's actually making you pure and holy, if you yield to it. Amen? And what I'm so challenged by is, you know, when Jesus says there's 30-fold, there's 60-fold, and 100-fold, 100-fold really is pursuing purity. And it's at your level of yielding to God. Amen? Amen? I'm very challenged by this. And you can go read it. 12 minutes, that's ridiculous. Ew, that is, that is a lie. Um, in John 5, Jesus is speaking and he says it many times. But I'm going to paraphrase, but Jesus says, like he does nothing unless his father says so. 
And I want to challenge us tonight is if we are to walk in purity, we've got to get to a level where we are so fixated on becoming like Christ in our hearts and in our minds. And that's challenging to the flesh. That looks like dying to the flesh. But it's possible in Christ. Amen. And I want to read a scripture because you might be like, okay, Michelle, but like, what does that look like? And I believe the Lord is highlighting the scripture for us as a community because it can be very easy to love the Lord in your little holy room by yourself. But that's not the model the Lord created. He created the beautiful thing called the church. And you're going to have someone who sits next to you that you don't like the way that they worship. You probably don't like the way that they sing or the way that they jump around. And they're probably going to be your sandpaper. Praise the Lord. Amen. So with that being said, Romans 12, verse 9 to 21. Do you know what the title of this is in my Bible? It says, Marks of the True Christian. Do you want to hear what the marks of a true Christian is? Because purity is walking in the love of God. This is what it looks like. Okay, we're going to go through this. Okay, marks of a true Christian, verse 9. Let love be genuine. Abhor, is that correct? Abhor what is evil. Hold fast to what is good. Do you know what that, that word actually means? It means detest what is evil. If we are to walk in purity, we actually have to detest what is evil. Do you know what's evil? Gossip, slander, division. Go read Galatians 5. That is evil. That is the fruit of the flesh. Amen. Hold fast to what is good. Love one another with brotherly affection. Outdo one another in showing honour. This is very important. Do not be slothful in zeal. Do you know what that means? That Do not be slothful in zeal. What is zeal? Zeal is your tenacity for the gospel. Zeal is your tenacity to pursue Jesus with everything. And sometimes we can be slothful in our church seats because we've lost the fire that which we've just sung about. Be fervent in spirit, serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in tribulation. Be steadfast in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints and seek to show hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. Amen. Bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty but associate with the lowly. Never be wise in your own sight. Do you know that arrogant hearts cannot experience, the arrogant heart, that which will not humble himself under the presence of God, will never inherit the kingdom of God. We are nothing without Jesus. Repay no one evil for evil, but give thought to do what is honourable in the sight of all. If possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave it to the wrath of God, for it is written, vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. To the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink, but do so For by so 
doing, you will heap burning coals on your head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. As the body of Christ, we need to take this. This is how the world should see us. These are marks of a true Christian. Amen. Often we think, oh, to be the marks of the true Christian, we need to be going down Florida Road, casting out demons, healing the sick. Amen. But that's the outworking of a heart of purity. Because you can be praying, bless you, but in your heart, you're like, Lord, I know you say vengeance is yours, but I want to take vengeance now. That's not the heart of God. And Jesus even says it, they will know that you are my disciples by the way that you love one another. You know, I think the Lord is bringing this word because if we can't get it right in here, how will we get it right out there? And the love of God, we must be known for the genuine love of Christ that we carry. Amen? We have the ability to carry agape love. That's wild. The world doesn't know that love. The world's love is totally, totally, what's the correct word? It's, it's give and take. It's conditional. Thank you, Enos. Oh. <laughs> Yes, Megan, I heard the wow. <laughs> My mind's not going to something else. Um, the world's love is totally conditional. Our love has to be unconditional. Amen? And this might set someone free is your expectation, people get hurt on expectation. That's just the truth. Do you know what God said? Lay the word, the Lord said, the words of Jesus, lay your life down for your brothers. That doesn't sound very conditional. That sounds sacrificial. So stop having expectation of others that which you're not prepared to lay your life down for them. Amen. It's very easy to be like, no, the marks of the true Christian for you. No, that's not your responsibility. Your responsibility is to check your own self. Who are you accountable? Yourself. Amen. And it's a beautiful thing and a beautiful place to live in where you have almost like a self-distrust. I think we chatted about it at, in community. It's like, I actually have a self-distrust in myself. Outside of the Word of God and outside of me yielding to the Lord, I can't, my trust is not in myself. My trust is not in myself making the right decisions. My trust is wholly yielding to God. Amen? I want you to jump quickly. Two minutes. Where? Two Timothy, verse two. We're going to read from verse 20. Two Timothy, two, verse 20. Now in a great house, there are not only vessels of gold and silver, but also of wood and clay, some for honourable use, some for dishonourable. Therefore, if anyone cleanses himself from what is dishonourable, he will be a vessel for honourable use, set apart as holy, useful to the master of the house, ready for every good work. Amen. I want to go down to verse 22. Do you know that you can be an, a vessel of honourable use? We're going to read how you can do that. 
that's what I was speaking about. Purity is sanctification. Sanctification in the, in the Old Testament is said multiple times. Sanctify yourself. What does sanctification mean? It says to be set apart for God. Do you want to hear how you be set apart for God? So flee. Flee from youthful passions and pursue righteousness, faith, love, peace, along with those who call on the Lord from a pure heart. Have nothing to do with foolish, ignorant controversies. You know that they breed quarrels. And the Lord's servants must not be quarrelsome, but kind to everyone, able to teach, patiently enduring evil, correcting his opponents with gentleness. God may perhaps grant them repentance, leading to a knowledge of the truth, and that they may come to their senses and escape from the snare of the devil after being captured by him to do his will. Amen? That's powerful, guys. Let's be set apart. Let's not just come worship the Lord, but to be vessels of honour. Because we carry the presence of God. Don't limit what you carry. If you're not going to be set apart, you're limiting what you're carrying. How much do you want it? How much of God do you want to carry? He's paid for it all. But we must pursue purity of heart and purity of mind. Amen? And I, with my three seconds, that's very unfair. We, but you know what I wanted to quickly touch on is what do you prioritize? I want you to be conscious about this. Is what do you prioritize in your mind? What thought life do you prioritize? What's the meditation of your heart? Because our minds can be renewed, should be removed, renewed, some removed. <laughs> Generally, whatever you prioritize, you can show what your purpose is. What I'm trying to say is, if you prioritize, what should we prioritize? That's a great question. I'm glad you asked. 2 Corinthians, we're going very fast now. 2 Corinthians 5, verse 9. Paul speaking is like, should I, like, what would be better if I, like, Went to heaven or I'm still here. And he says this, we make it our aim to please him. Is your aim to please him? Our aim should be to please him. If our aim was to please him, we would be walking in a whole lot more purity because you know that you wouldn't prioritize certain habits, certain mindsets. If your aim is to please him, you will walk in purity. Amen. And I don't have time, but I really, I really want you to go read um, Numbers 14. It's probably one of the saddest scriptures in the whole, it's probably one of the saddest chapters in the whole Bible. And what's just happened, if you remember, if you've been in this church for um, longer than a year, our like scripture for the year last year was, whose report are you going to believe? And it was based on Numbers 12, if I'm not, no around there, somewhere. Oh. Michelle, don't you work for the ministry? Yes. Um, praise the Lord. But Numbers 14, it's really sad. So the people have come back. They've sent out the 12 spies. And obviously the 10 spies have given the bad reports. And the whole congregation have made up their minds that they're not going to believe Joshua and Caleb. They're not going to believe Joshua and Caleb. And it says the people rebel. And it is like, it is so, the scripture is just 
so, so sad because they're literally like, well, we're going to choose a leader and we're going to go back to Egypt because we don't believe what God has said. We don't believe that we can um, take down the, the armies, etc., etc. They grumble against God. God is now like, well, I'm just going to destroy all of them and I'm going to make my people through Moses, then Moses is like, no, Lord, don't do that because then all the enemies are gonna think that you have like forgotten us. They're going to come against us. And pretty much it ends with God saying, well, they're going to die in the wilderness and only the descendants of Joshua and Caleb will go into my, into the promised land. And why I share that is because what, I mean, guys, these people walk through like they walked through the ocean. They saw all the plagues. They got fed by the Lord. And yet their hearts were, their hearts were against God. And why I share that is because it's like, it's a warning. Do not allow doubt and do not allow unbelief to ever creep into your heart. Because you can even, then what is so crazy is they're like, well, now Moses, we're going to go into the promised land without you. They go, they get taken out and they die. And it's like they, they heard the promise. They tried to do it without God. They rebelled against God. Their hearts were hardened against God and they never enjoyed the purposes that God intended for them. And I say it because it's a warning. Never allow doubt and unbelief to creep into your heart because it's actually so easy. And why these people got to this point is because they had no reverence for God. And what's crept in the church is this ideology of grace that you can do whatever at the expense of reverence unto God. That's not the gospel of Jesus Christ. We are here and we sang it because He's holy. doesn't matter about how you feel. Sorry. Gentleness, yeah, there we go. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> Good thing Josh is listening. But we, there's a point where their hearts were too hardened for God to change their heart. And they knew the promise. And that's not to be like, oh my word. Like, I'm saying it is like, you can know the promise but there gets to a point if your heart does not change and in your heart you're grumbling against God, get on the floor, repent before the Lord and ask Him to change your heart. You know what saved Caleb and Joshua? As they had faith in the promise of God and their will was to please God. Amen? Amen? And last point, this is really unfair. I'm not going over. I'm not like, I refuse to get a rebuking after this because I only got 15, 20 minutes. Um, but I wanted to finish with this is absolutely our, our priority must be to please Him. And out of that, our priority must be to preach the gospel. I'm challenged by this and I want to challenge you because I'm challenged by it. I'm going to challenge you about it. Is are we making disciples? Are we actually making disciples? Come, we're going to the scripture. Matthew 28 verse 19. And I'm asking the Lord, Lord, imprint this more on my heart. Because the church, absolutely the Lord will grow His church. But you are the carrier of the presence of God. If we don't take responsibility, one thing our generation are terrible in, myself included, and I acknowledge it, I'm like, Lord, take this out of me, is actually responsibility. Can I tell you, when you gave your heart to Jesus Christ, maybe no one told you this, 
well, welcome. You actually got a whole mandate. You got a whole like job description from God and it is, okay, now this is your job description. Go and make disciples. Go preach the gospel. We have a responsibility to uphold and grow with co-laboring with Christ to establish His church. Amen? And Jesus came and said to them, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the end of age. Amen? That's our responsibility, to preach the gospel. Amen? How do you preach the gospel? Teach them all the commands I've given you. Are you positioning yourself to hear the commands of the Lord? Do you know the one who's sending you, who's commissioned you? Because he's called you and he wants you to be a vessel of honourable use. This sounds like a vessel of honourable use. Amen. And I'm going to finish with this scripture. It's found in Romans 8, verse 11. Romans is not found in Timothy. If the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Now I have to start again. If the spirit of him, the Holy Spirit, of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Jesus Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. Amen. I think we need to get hungry again for God. Maybe not again, more hungry. That's the paradox of the gospel is like the more that you eat, the more hungry you get. And I don't know about you, but if the word says it, I want to see it. I'm not satisfied. Yes, I'm like, I've seen incredible things, but I'm like, okay, I've prayed for a dead person they didn't that didn't, you know, rise. <laughs> I want to see the dead raised. I want to see people getting out of wheelchairs. I want to see deliverances. I want to see God move. Why? Because the same Spirit that raised Christ from the grave lives in me. And I better grow my revelation of that because it's not God who's holding back. It must be unbelief. And when we have a revelation, a continual revelation, of if you can go read this, I don't have time, but it's in Genesis, I think it's Genesis 28. It's Mo, uh, Moses, listen to me. Jacob has this vision of a ladder and it's heaven and earth. And what, what I started off with, Jesus removed the veil is we become portals. Will you allow yourself to be a portal of God? What am I saying is you carry, you can carry the presence, you do carry the presence of God, but will you allow heaven to literally flood through our lives? And why I started off by saying what are true marks of a Christian is don't think, don't automatically think that those are casting out demons, healing the sick. It has to start with love. It has to start with love. It has to start in a purity of our minds and in our hearts. That is where the honourable vessel will be tested. Allow God to work in that. Work in your mind, work in your heart. Be renewed by the Word of God and be obedient to His presence. Be obedient to His Spirit. Yield to Him. Amen. 
Thank you for watching. Join us again next week to stay in touch with all that God is doing at Inside Church.